let's rewind and then um, come back. Yeah. I really, I want to come back to um, what led to you leaving other than like, that's awesome. And then actually, I want to hear some like practical things of things that you were thinking about leading up until like prepar- preparing to leave, because I think sure. that that's something that is so unique to your story. But first, yeah. Caitlin, um, yeah. how did you, how did, what was your path to becoming a designated accountant? And let's maybe Uh, Let's go before starting articling, but after, I don't know, uh, the toddler years, somewhere before that. (laughs) Somewhere. Oh man, I think it was my mom. She, I remember this, I was into like the expensive jean phase of my life as a teenager. And I was like, I'm going to buy these $300 pair of diesel jeans because it'll make me a better person. She really did. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. I still have them by the way. I can't throw them out. Cause I'm like, I worked for these. Um, uh, and she would say things like you better, you know, you better get some sort of job that's going to, going to pay for this lifestyle of yours. And she always mentioned being a CA. She knew a lot, knew a lot of CA. So it got in my head and then going throughout school, I loved math. I loved sciences and I thought maybe engineering or something with that, but then I just, I loved people and, and business and stuff like that. I would, as a kid, I would actually, (laughs) this is great to force my sister to play with me. I would steal her things and then I would make her come buy them from my store in my room. And then I would like keep a chart of accounts of things like I was an accountant probably from a young age. Maybe that's where my mom got it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> she was six years older than me and she didn't want to play with me. I'm like, well, if you need your scissors, you've got to come get me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's a first. That yeah. is really good. So then university, um, I didn't really see, yeah, business just made sense to me. Um, accounting was hard. I remember that first year. It was, it was really hard. And then I pushed through, I had a group of friends that were doing with with me and they were all of like mine. So it just seemed like I was on the right path. Um, How did you push through? Like, were there any tactics? um, Honestly, it was the people I was with probably. That's been like a theme of my life. I think, uh, not to get too deep, but the people around you going through the same thing, you can kind of empathize with each other, help each other out. It was like a good group of five of us that have known each other since junior high who all wanted to be, you know, accountants. And the other thing I would do, and I'm pretty, I'm a pretty bad, bad procrastinator, <laughs> so I know that. But I would, I wouldn't work my ass off all the time. Like I just had fun. Kind of. I needed to have fun, or else I couldn't. I needed the balance. So pushing through was like getting working my ass off sometimes but also just letting it completely go others yeah what what were you doing when you weren't uh (laughs) working your ass off I was like do you want to ask that no (laughs) Uh, hey (laughs) all good (laughs) yeah we were uh there was like two you know university bars that we frequented but uh A lot of the times it was just at each other's houses. I remember specifically one of my guy friends was just obsessed with Metallica for some reason. Oh, yeah. And we would just hang out there. He put on the DVD of Metallica's like live concerts. I can't listen to them to to this day. And we would just hang out and talk about anything but university. Yeah. Just chilling. Yeah. Just (laughs) disconnect. Cool. And then... When did you, because you went to University of Alberta in Edmonton, correct? Yeah, yeah. So when did you have to declare that you were an accounting major? Um, second year. So you had to get into business. First year was like, yeah, undergrad or sorry. Yeah, you had to get, first year was the year that you had to get like good grades to get into business school. And then first year business, you had to declare your major. Um, so that it was just kind of known to me that I was going to do that. I've questioned it many times whether I should have done it, but like talking to you and knowing my life now, it was good. It was a good decision. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Just, I mean, questioning is good, 
right? Yeah. I never want to live life where I'm just like not questioning. I'm just like, no, nope, made this decision. I turned right. I must keep going straight. <laughs> like totally. Eventually totally. the world will come around, but I'm not going to go back or question. Like yeah. I thought business law for a while. I love law. Yeah. And then I was like, honestly, I, I wasn't motivated in it. I could just, I, they were all multiple choice exams. And I was like, well, I'm not even going to study. I'm just going to chance this. Such a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what was your best accounting class in university? Like your best or favorite? My favorite? Weirdly, I really liked management accounting because I'm so detailed. Yeah. So I really liked that. My financial, my like all of my financial accounting ones were so hard. They were so hard. They really are. <laughs> I'm like cough, Sam cough. Like, I feel like you're probably that, that person to a lot of people. Like my, my professor's name was Loretta and she's known as being like one of the hardest professors, but yeah, well, and that's, it's funny because I sometimes talk with like our grads after and I'm like, Hey, do you think I was hard? Do you think the material was hard? Like, what do you think both? And, um, of the people, so non-scientifically they're like, your class is the first time that I realized that the prof and the material can be separate. So you can like either not like one and like the other, um, oh. and they're, but they're also like, um, like some can be really hard and just knowing that like, it's never kind, like better with you, but it's still really hard. I was like, yeah, like this shit's not easy. It's like not it's easy. not. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way to do it is separate it. Cause it's just the nature of it. It's yeah, hard. And, perhaps earlier on, like first and second year or like man, an intro, intro, maybe mm -hmm. like a couple other, um, like maybe audit, but like at some point financial reporting, you got the standards, like it's, they're yeah. not easy standards and they're not intuitive. It's another type of language. So true. So true. But I, for us, when I have to get in there, I'm like, Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because what you teach for the CPA Western school of business yeah. is in my opinion, um, you know, like I taught it when I was there, but uh, now at university, like I'm audit, like audit and assurance, the standards I would say are <clears throat> evolving yeah. faster than IFRS now. And you need to know the IFRS in order to audit it. So like, I would say that you have a technically more demanding position like That's true. Than what you teach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. I think people get surprised when they get to audit insurance in the, CP in the CPA program, how financial reporting heavy it is, but mm -hmm. it's the nature of it. Like you're auditing risks because something is going wrong. In yeah. And you need to know the standard in order to know what the risks associated are. So totally. like my little pitch to like, I'm like, Hey, like everybody, all this, all this stuff is equal. We're all good. But like without financial reporting, there is nothing to audit and there's nothing to tax. So yeah. <laughs> So we need it. Yeah. <laughs> so we win. Yeah. <laughs> Spend all your time. No, it's not not a competition. No. Okay, cool. Um, and then did you do any because it's not a mandatory co-op program? No. So how did you like did you work during school? Did you have or was your oh. graduation date? Like, how did you kind of make that transition? Yeah, so I did co-op um at, in Edmonton. So U of A, and then, um, but even before that, I always worked, I worked from a, when I was like, as soon as I could, like, I think it's 14 or whatever, really, when you're supposed to start, I can't remember. Um, I worked- When you're allowed to start, not when you're- allowed to start, I think <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah, supposed to, sorry. Oh. No, 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 I- In my family, it was supposed, supposed to. Supposed to, yeah. Get out of the house. Um, well, you have $300 jeans to buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> an investment. <laughs> Um, yeah, so co-op was just, uh, something that I wanted to do to ensure I had a job at the time because jobs were like really hard to come by at the time. So I got into the co-op program, did that, and then asked for a transfer to Calgary in the end, but all throughout university, I worked, I worked, um, one of my, I always work customer service job. I don't know why I'm not good with like whiny people. <laughs> And one of them was a pool and I, I'm a swimmer. So I always like, well, this is convenient. I'll get free memberships if I do customer service at these pools. And I would just sit there and listen to people come out and complain that like the things are dry, the dryer's not working and all these things. I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm not, I just, <laughs> I don't, 
I, it was not meant for me. So it made me like, yeah, university. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you are so chill though. Like I would say that like one of the reasons like we, we complement each other well. We also have a number of overlapping values and strengths, mm-hmm. but like we also compliment because I'm a little bit more like, and like, you're like, you're like chill. And sometimes we flip flop, but like you're, yeah. I can see somebody like complaining to you for like a long time. And you're just being like, that sucks. Yep. <laughs> yep. That is correct. Or I would just be like, you're, you need some help. Like <laughs> <laughs> you need I'll some help. Here's a refund. Here's yeah. your five ninety nine back. Like, please, please. See you later. Absolutely. Oh man. Yeah. There was but I remember the time when I was dating my husband in university, he was like, I'm surprised you're not fired for just <laughs> how you, <laughs> how That's you very do it. Yeah. It's very fat. Cause he's like, you know, you have the job done. You make sure you do it well. And I take, I specifically, one guy came out when I say the, like the bathing suit dryer wasn't working. He's like holding his wet bathing suit. What do I do with this? And I just took his bathing suit and I ringed it out on the floor and plucked it back at him. I was just like, no, that's how you, that's how you deal with life, man. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to bathing suit ringing because that's like a metaphor. It's a skill set to be like, okay, this is mission critical and needs to be solved. This can be yeah. solved with a good enough. And this yeah. is something we are going to accept <laughs> and move on. <laughs> it's like professional judgment. Not if we dry them completely. Like, no, just <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Like throw a hair dryer at him. Like, here you go. Yeah. Okay, so you were the firm that you were working with in the university for your co-op. Mm-hmm. They were like, cool, here's a transfer to Calgary. And that's where you started. Yeah. Price Waterhouse. They were cool with it. They, um, Calgary at the time needed lots of people. Oil and gas was doing well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they were really cool with it. They were, um, they weren't like jazzed that they spent time training me. Yeah. But I think because I, I, I made a good case too. I was just like, I don't, I'm not interested in the industries here and stuff like that. So no, this is, I want to dig in just for a brief moment because I could see a number of our learners being like, oh, well, I want to work in X city. I shouldn't even bother being here. Or I would like to, so you talk to your manager and you made a case. And instead of saying, I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, instead of saying why it would be good for you, you said why it would be good for the company and you and how you can contribute more to the company. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause you're like, I'm not interested in these like industries. Exactly. That's, that's, that's truth. I'm interested in these ones. I see a business need. So it's like you yeah. complemented the two together. That's precisely right. Like I knew that they were looking for people in Calgary and I knew Edmonton wasn't. Yeah. So I was like, would you, would this resource, which I was be better suited to go to Calgary? It's basically my case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it a and scary then- conversation to have? It was usually, I don't know, I'm that type of person when I want something, I just go for it. So I was pumped. I was like excited. I love change. I might be a little too addicted to it. <laughs> I don't know. I, you don't change for change's sake though, right? Yeah. No. You also don't no. back down, back down to a challenge. Always get the job done. But like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember the partner I had to talk to, I was nervous about, but they were so understanding. I think they understood that, yeah, people, people need, you know, what they, I don't know. I feel like they understood that, um, your values are going to change the way your work performance is like what you, or what you want to do will make you a better worker in the long run. Like if you end up somewhere where you really want to be. Yeah. You're going to benefit the firm more. Absolutely. So, yeah. So then you're at PwC in Calgary. And what does that look like as far as studying and working goes to getting your designation? Yeah. PwC was, I think you can talk to anyone. It was hard. It was a lot of hours and studying late nights. Um, I'm the ultimate procrastinator. So I was like Friday from four. You always got off early on Friday. That's one thing about price. I think that's one thing about Calgary is like Fridays. If you book a meeting after three, like no one's showing up. Yeah. 
the Fridays, that was good for me. I would like finish the job Friday at three, do my whole assignment from three until seven, and then go out and just, you know, douse myself in vodka. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hashtag from life. But they were amazing. They were supportive. They always had materials for us throughout the way. Like it was, they always had workshops. They had things that were, I don't know. I always felt very supported throughout Casby legacy program. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you have the, the firm mom, um, when you were going through at PwC? I'm trying to think, I know there was someone, but yeah, I can't remember who it was that just like organized all that. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was doing workshops in Calgary, all my PwC people would come with these like custom, like it would be the materials from the workshop, but then like printed and like flagged and stuff found. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're like, we have this woman at work and she's like our CPA mom or CA mom and she yeah. prints all the materials. So you had, she was around too. Yeah, she was around. I just can't remember who it was. Why am I blanking? It might have changed too by the time I was there, but I, I don't know. It was, it was a, yeah, we always had coiled books. Like I still kept them because some of them were so, they had like um, personal tax books that I still reference sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So they just had someone handling that for us. And well, and like, yeah. it's a good thing to kind of point out that, you know, we always think that people that contribute to different things are make these like grand gestures and not saying that that wasn't no time because that was, you know, considerable okay. amount of time and steadiness, but it's like, you know, that the small things can really be the big things sometimes. Huge. Like I, when we found out, like my husband was at Deloitte that they weren't getting that kind of treatment. We were like, thank you so much because I just show up to like my module workshop I've got everything I need and like, I don't have to think about a thing and I'm usually hungover. So it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One of the girls, like I, um, I don't think she went home after her Friday night and she went to oh. the workshop and she's on one side of me. And then another girl like that didn't know her was on the other side and there was one person, like our session leader walked by, like the instructor. And yeah. this girl was like, I think our session leader is drunk. And I'm like, no, it's that person. And she like walked by and was like, oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, A distillery. Oh, yeah. Not like, yeah, not glamorizing anything because, you know, it's, it's just one of those realities that it's hard. Like, it's, it's yeah. hard and different people cope in different ways and not saying, not judging, but also not saying that that's the only coping mechanism out there. Um, totally. I think running up a mountain, you know, if I could yeah. go back in time, I'd be like, go run a hill, Samantha, like just go. Holy shit. I would too. I'm like, try working out once, Caitlin, that might help your mental state, but I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't leave my desk. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that What's really cool now is seeing with um, the kind of, I hope, I'm going to say post COVID, but we'll see like the, yeah. um, all of the values for work-life balance travel or work-life integration or like, oh yeah, like I can achieve my goals, but I can also do what I want. Um, I think like, I'm really liking how it's being reflected in, in some of the workplaces. I think that at times perhaps some people may or may not expect back to all of that now so it's it's yeah. a tricky balance because it's like yes go work towards it but also realize that their corporations making making money so if you can demonstrate your case if you can demonstrate that you're going to do a really good job mm -hmm. um and you've already done a good job you have a history of it and you're like hey i would like to go you know for four weeks and i realize i have two weeks vacation so can we either arrange something where i'm working remotely yeah. Or where I can take some unpaid time off, like you kind of, it's like a bank. You can't take a uh, withdrawal without making deposits first. Totally. Like I was actually thinking about that because currently looking for, you know, maybe some, a job to fill a bit more of my time right now. And there's always that period of time. You do have to prove yourself first. Like you have to make that deposit. And I think oh, that's a little bit lost with what's happened with COVID. People just like want this balance right away which I'm all about balance yeah, completely, but you do have to, you know, make sure you're trusted before that. Um, mm -hmm. Trust yeah. is huge. Uh, and then once you get it, hopefully you have, you have the flexibility after that. 
Well, yeah, yeah. Once you establish it, I feel like then it's a conversation. Whereas before, like totally. the first little bits, everybody, both sides are working out the other people. Like they're like, totally. can I trust you? And you're like, can I trust you? Can I trust you? Can I trust you? And it's, yeah. it's a, yeah. it's a trial period for, 